Thank you for joining us. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Hey, everybody, I'm so excited. We are talking about maximize your life behind the chair. We have first time guest Jennifer Alvarez here to share her journey, her expertise today. I cannot wait for you to meet her. And by the way, we have this episode available on our Beyond the Technique YouTube page. If you wanna see the face behind the name, if you wanna see the raw, unedited version of today's conversation, go to Beyond the Technique's YouTube page. While you're there, subscribe, it's free. And you'll always be notified when new free education launches and all of our video podcasts are launched there. So welcome everybody to Beyond the Technique. Let me just give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Meet Your Stylist. If it weren't for our sponsors, we couldn't do what we do here, releasing episodes week after week for all of our listeners. We love you and we love Meet Your Stylist. Why? Because Meet Your Stylist is completely changing the game for salon marketing. If you have a team of five or more stylists and you're wondering how in the heck am I going to make sure that they're all booked and that the clients that we're booking them with are coming back again, that's Meet Your Stylist. Meet Your Stylist is a fun, easy, accurate matchmaking survey that lives on your salon website. And the one job it has is to make sure we're converting those website visitors into lifetime clients. There is nothing like Meet Your Stylist. Our salons using Meet Your Stylist are converting 35 to 55% of the people taking their survey. What else does that for you and have conversion rates to that level? The answer is nothing. You can be a part of the movement. Go to meetyourstylist.com and get your salon signed up today. Alrighty. Well, I'm so excited. Jennifer Alvarez is here and she's another Midwest girl after my own heart. Jennifer is a licensed cosmetologist and started her career 20 years ago. She has studied at the Redken Exchange in New York City, Vidal Sassoon Academy in London, and has had the privilege to study with celebrity artists. As the first recipient of the Leo Passage Award, she has won several photo shoot hair competitions and scholarships. From traveling the U.S. teaching with hair care companies to being a guest artist at beauty schools and salons, her experience and knowledge have been the driving force of her award-winning bridal company and salon. Jennifer's goal is to make an impact in the beauty industry by educating others on how to be successful as an artist through business strategies. Welcome, Jennifer, to be on the technique. Thank you so much, Katie. I so appreciate that introduction. Oh, it's my pleasure. And for everybody listening, if you are so into podcasts, you've got to check out Jennifer's podcast, The Beauty Business Game Changer. Her niche are booth renting salon owners and also beauty school students. So she's got so much to give today, which is why we really want to dive into this topic of maximizing your life behind the chair. But let me back way up because Jennifer's achieved so much. And if you're watching, she's so young. And I have to know what in the heck got you into the beauty beauty industry in the first place? When did you begin your journey? Well, you're too kind because I, you know, I, I need my Botox fix, but um, so I got into the beauty industry when I was in high school, actually. It was, I was in seventh grade when I'm like, I know I want to do hair. I know I want to do makeup. Like I always pictured myself doing that, you know, like for fun, me and my friends would always do each other's makeovers and we, it was so stupid. We would create the Sears catalog and uh, take pictures and it, it was just it was something that came easy to me because school wasn't very easy. And so thankfully our high school had like a trade school and they paid for us to go to beauty school. So I just had to pay for my kit. And that was growing up in a small town without a ton of money. It was like the right move to go. That's incredible and really unheard of now. I don't know if schools are continuing that, but I think it's phenomenal program and how amazing that you had that opportunity. When you started in beauty school, and of course, you didn't stop there, what prompted you to then take all of this advanced education, like big time education, where you're off in other countries? What, how did that go for you? Why did you choose to do all of those big educational um, endeavors? Honestly, I just became obsessed with the fact to learn. I you know, I don't know if I was just trying to prove to myself or prove to other people that in this industry, you can be absolutely wildly successful 
it wasn't really until I left my really small town and came up to um, the Chicagoland area that I was exposed to some really cool people. Um, and I had some great connections um, through the person that I was working for at the time. And just seeing what they were doing in their careers, I'm like, I want that. Like, I gotta, I gotta taste that too. Um, and so I just kind of grabbed on to whoever I could and, you know, grabbed their coattails and went on the journey with them. So it was a wild adventure for sure. And it wasn't easy, but I'm so glad that I, you know, just made that jump to do that and go that route with education. Up until launching your own consulting company and your podcast, when it, when it came to being behind the chair yourself, when we think about today's topic being maximizing your life, at what point of your career behind the chair, what accomplishment are you most proud of? What accomplishment am I most proud of behind the chair? Um, I would have to say really taking um, ownership of the client's experience. Um, I found very quickly that doing hair extensions and also doing bridal not only was filling my soul, but it was filling my pockets. And so I really, really focused on specializing in that particular area. And I always just kind of had this motto of you fake it till, you're, till you make it. Um, and, and I think that's so important too, because as like a newer artist, when you're starting to do things outside of your comfort zone, outside of your box, you can feel so intimidated about like talking about products or asking a client to spend $1,500 on her hair, you know? And I think that in the beginning stages, it's like, oh, I could never ask for that, you know, because here I was charging like $15 for a haircut into, you know, now charging like four times as much. And I think that you just have to keep doing, keep trying, and I think the education part of it really allowed me to gain that confidence that I could bring to behind the chair. Oh, tell me more about bridal. And I know Chicago's got to be a big bridal business. What about bridal, did, as you mentioned, like fills your soul? You know, doing weddings for myself, I love doing updos. Um, I love doing makeup and that even in beauty school, like that, that was my jam. Like it just, it just came, the creative aspect of it was something I really enjoyed. It, it came much easier to me than other uh, techniques behind the chair. And I took a great liking to it. And it wasn't until 20, I want to say 2014 that I launched my bridal, my bridal business. And it was because somebody took a chance on me. Some random lady came into the salon and was like, she, she really liked me. And she's like, would you be open to coming out to California to do this wedding? And so she flew me out there and wined and dined me. I got paid to do it. And it was just so much fun that I was like, there's gotta be something here. And so I, I launched my bridal business in 2014. And you know, you just have to jump in before you're ready. Cause I really, honestly, I didn't know what I was doing as far as business wise. I was just like, I know how to do hair and makeup. So uh, it's really evolved since then quite a bit. And yeah, Chicago has some great weddings. We have amazing wedding venues and so, so many talented people in the industry. So it's so cool to just collaborate with so many different people and artists. And, you know, it's just one of those things that, yeah, it fills my pocket. It fills my soul. So it's just like, it just it feels right. And it feels good to go into that direction. Now let's fast forward to you launching your own podcast, your own consulting company. I know behind the scenes, you had mentioned that it was uh, kind of a product of your own search and what you were looking for as a professional. Tell me a bit about how those brands blossomed. Yeah, they, they really did just blossom from the fact that, you know, here I was working behind the chair um, for, for a, a company for 11 years. And um, then it was time that I launched my own salon suite. I launched that in 2016, same thing. I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just kind of putting the pieces together and figuring it out, you know? It's, it's way different of being a talented person behind the chair 
creating beautiful hair, beautiful makeup, but it's really, I believe that it's 80% of your business is going to be successful if you focus on growing your business. You know, I think the secondary is, are you talented? Um, I think that people will return back to your business, even if it was like an okay haircut or an okay updo. If you build that relationship with those people, they're going to come back. I mean, they're going to be your lifers. Um, from opening that salon suite, I was able to scale it um, and start hiring on a team. And then therefore I opened up a salon and I was getting a lot of people asking me, like, I think I'm going to start a salon suite. I think I'm going to open up a salon. How did you do it? And I felt like as I was going through that journey, I really didn't know who to turn to. And there was a lot of dated information out there on the internet and older books. And I think now with us being more of an educational, uh, education focused, um, I believe that there's a lot more great information out there. And I felt like I need to contribute because if I could go back in time to 2014 when I launched a bridal business or 2016 when I opened the suite or just recently in 2019 opening up a salon, I wish that I had somebody there to like coach me and help me and mentor me. So it wouldn't have been so painful um, and the growing pains that uh, go along with that. So it's, it's the Beauty Business Game Changer podcast I was just like, one day I was like, I think I'm going to do this. And, you know, I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I had a message that I wanted to share. I love inspiring and motivating people. And I'm just like, I'm just going to try it out. And uh, if I don't like it, then I'll stop. And so far I really like it. So I kept going. Um, and as far as like consulting too, same thing. It's just, you know, taking all of that, that knowledge and experience that I've had and just putting it in maybe a digital form or a consulting coaching form. You know, at the end of the day, I just want to see my fellow friends who are also hairdressers and makeup artists, like get to where they want to be because everybody has their own journey. Everybody has like their own mission of why they're doing it. So there's enough room for everybody at the top, you know, let's just all go together. Oh my gosh, you're a girl after my own heart. <laughs> I love everything that you said. Um, and absolutely, I agree with you that 80% of success is beyond the technique. Hello. Yes, brilliant <laughs> um, name. And, but I also love that you are the type of woman who doesn't have boundaries and you say to yourself on a regular basis, okay, what's next? And when we think about what's next for our lives behind the chair. So we're speaking to people, whether you're a salon owner or stylist, you're, you're behind the chair, you want to maximize your life behind the chair. And you may be thinking right now, especially coming off of, or maybe some of us are still in midst of not even being open yet, but how can we maximize our lives behind the chair, whether you're part of a team or you're um, on your own? The biggest challenge I think that most people face is the mental roadblocks in business, whether it's you're actually physically working on clients or you're running and operating a salon. The things that slow you down and stop you from going to your furthest potential is your mindset. And so we always have to be in check with, you know, what are these roadblocks in our life that are stopping us from living our potential? Um, and it wasn't until most recently where I realized that. I wasn't living to work. I'm working because I want to create the lifestyle that I know that I deserve. Um, and so I think that we just need to tell ourselves, first off, get rid of these roadblocks of fear. Jump in before you're ready. I wish somebody would have told me that. And you have to have structure and strategy of why you're doing what you're doing. You have to have intentions behind that. You can't just be on autopilot and one day wake up and say, what happened to my business? How come I'm losing clients? How come I'm not making an increase of income? Everything needs to have some intention behind it. You know, I think it's so important that in order to maximize your time behind the chair, you have to put maximum effort in for every single client. Um, and you have to go in every week, every month, every year with a game plan of, okay, if I want this in my life and if I want, you know, success is different to everybody, you know, like it's not always material items. Some people really 
want to have more time and freedom with their family. And in order to do that, you have to have some type of goal of, okay, financially, in order to spend more time with your family and more quality time, you have to come up with some game plan that's going to allow you to get there. You can't just, you know, wish that it's going to happen because it's not going to. You have to do your work to do it. Well, I love that. And I love that you kind of start at the top with what's your personal vision for yourself and it could look different for everybody, but to start there and then work yourself to, okay, so here's what it means I need to do. Can you give us an example of a dream you had and you broke it down in the few first steps, you jumped right in and what are some of the things that you did differently to maximize that behind the chair time? So for myself, I, success to me looks like working less and making more. And so that was my game plan of, I want to work less time behind the chair and I want to make more. So I had to think about who are, who's my target market and who's going to um, pay the amount of money that I want to make because I want to make more money so I can um, travel with my husband and we can go to Disney World. And, you know, that was my vision. That was my goal. And so, yes, I had to start there of what am I seeking? And, you know, this is just an ongoing journey. It's like once you reach that goal, it's like, what else? What's next? You know, because once you accomplish something, it just makes you feel empowered to step it up and go someplace different, you know? So when it was time to, going from my salon suite to being a salon owner, you know, that's, again, it was all mindset, really. I, I, I did not want to open up a salon um, for the longest time because I just had this fear. And what is fear? Fear is like the unknown. It's a, it's a belief. But why do you have to believe that it's got to be scary? You know, I think that if you have the right mentors and coach, and I've always had mentors and coaches myself, And that has been instrumental to get to where I wanted to go is I needed to make sure that I had the right tools and resources to get to that next level. Um, And it's just like, once you accomplish one thing, then move on to the next. So yes, my, one of my ultimate goals was to be a salon owner, but you know, after I accomplished that, I'm like, okay, now what, let's keep going. You know, there's so much more to experience and explore um, but yeah, you've got to, you've got to start with the end of mine and, and just take baby steps, baby steps to get to the next level. Oh my gosh. I feel like we would have so much fun masterminding together and doing brainstorming like vision boards together. This is so good. Oh love- yes. Love, love a vision board. <laughs> well, and I love your quote and I wrote this down as like a Jennifer quote. Why do you have to believe it's going to be scary And I think that's so important to ask ourselves. I don't think I've heard that come out of anybody else's mouth. And I've been on over 350 episodes. That was awesome. Let me kind of pivot to now your life as a salon owner. What were some of those learning curves in that regard? And how do you help your stylists maximize their lives behind the chair? Well, first off, I have an amazing team, so I definitely am very blessed in that area, Um, but I learned very quickly, I need structure, I need a game plan, because how am I going to help these people? And I think one of the things that I was very fearful of is all the responsibilities on my hands that I have to grow other people. And so I was very clear from the very beginning when I hired my staff is, I'm going to do 50% of the work, and you're going to do the other 50% of the work. And I think by taking off 100% of that pressure uh, allowed me space to be create, be creative and to help them. You know, I think I, in high school, I was a cheerleader. And I think that's just always like, has been a part of me that like, I love cheering people on, you know, because I want other people to cheer me as well. And I think that's just so important to constantly be high-fiving and, and, and celebrating those small wins. Not, it's, it doesn't always have to be big wins, but for my team, you know, we have a game plan of, of this is what we're going to be tracking for the week. This is our goals for the month. And, and is this what you want to make? And then also um, just working together as a team to how can we get you to that, that goal and that level? 
Oh, I like that you asked the question, is this what you want to make? You really help empower them to wherever they're at, whatever their their mindset is of, of what their goals are. So I love that. I also love that you were a cheerleader. Um, <laughs> more intense than people give it credit for, but it's also given you this aspect of team. And so it definitely is a cool dynamic that you're bringing to the table, Jennifer. When we think about maximizing our life behind the chair, what else should we be thinking about? I know that you really, especially mentioned um, your top accomplishment behind the chair is taking ownership of that client experience. When we think about maximizing our life behind the chair, how do you recommend especially for highly supportive people who may not be bold and like in your face, to, you know, how do we help them maximize their life behind the chair by taking ownership of that client experience with them? Well, I, there's a couple things there. I think that it's important to really find what fills you um, because if you are spending more time doing that and so let's say that haircuts are your jam and that you love cutting hair, then you know that you need to be looking for clients who are seeking haircuts, but it shouldn't just stop there. We are in the service industry and you are doing a disservice to your client if you're not offering her other things. The time that they sit in the chair may be the only time that they ever get to sit down. Like, yes, I've been sitting down at this computer like for two months straight, but like if I ever go to this salon and get my hair done, that's the only time that I'm actually like looking in the mirror at myself and taking that time for ourselves. And a lot of these, like uh, at least 80% of our business is women and we have amazing career successful women and they're also moms and they're also, you know, wearing a lot of different hats in their life. And so the second that they come into the salon, I mean, gosh, they just want to feel really good about themselves inside and out. And it's our job. It's our duty to help them feel so important. And if you just do the bare minimum, that's, that's what you're going to get out of it, the bare minimum. So it's, it's, it's twofold. It's, good. it's a win-win situation. It will be financially good for you, more fulfilling, more fun, and then an outstanding, memorable experience for your guests. You had mentioned that you wish somebody would have told you just to jump right in. What are you doing to help encourage stylists to jump right into that next big thing that they want to work on as far as how your approach to coaching them? So I would say, I mean, right, right now with what I'm doing, I, I did create, I don't know if you want me to talk about it just yet, but um, with the pivot to profit roadmap is something that I sat down and I thought like, what would I want if I asked myself before I started that suite or before I started the salon, like, what would I need that would help me get to that next level? And so I thought the one thing that was holding me back and held me back for a lot of different things in my life was my, my mindset. I always felt like there was roadblocks. And so how can we eliminate those roadblocks so we can focus on what is going to move the needle in our business and take it to the next level? And so there is like a five-step action plan that talks about how you need to explore and identify. And, you know, I think that we all have fears. I mean, one of the biggest fears is fear of failure. But I always thought to myself, like, and it may sound um, cheesy, but I always thought like, before I die, I got to do this. You know, before I die, I'm going to make sure that I do the salon. And I think that if you go in and say, if I fail, I fail, but you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to focus on this one thing and just go all in and make the most of it. And you just can't, you just can't be afraid to do it. If it's in your heart, it's in your heart for a reason. It was put there and you have to explore it. Oh my gosh, it's so inspiring. And I know that by the time our episode is launching, your Profit to Pivot, Pivot to Profit yes. <laughs> uh, web, webinar will have come and gone. Now, how can we learn about your program? And of course, for everybody listening, I have all of Jennifer's links in our show notes for you to connect with her through her different um, social channels, website, all of the above. Are there any kind of 
resources that you could provide that would help people outside of today get in front of your pivot to profit program? Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to have this available on my website. So jenniferjadealvarez.com. Uh, go ahead and check that out. I have a ton of free resources on there. I'm very vulnerable and a very open book just because, you know, I'm still learning and growing myself, but all the things that I have learned along the way, I wanted to package it up and like just create something really pretty that was easy. You know, I, like I said, I was not very good in school and, um, you know, I don't think that growing your business or starting your business, I don't think that it needs to be hard. We just have to have the right game plan, the right map uh, to get to our destination. And I think that, you know, this whole pivot to profit roadmap that I created was to say, we got roadblocks. Okay, now what? We, got, we have to just stop making that excuse. Too many artists that I've spoken to are like, I don't know how. I don't know how to get there. I don't know where to start. And if we're just walking through life unsatisfied, I, I don't want... I don't want anybody to be unsatisfied or unfulfilled or, or not motivated to want more in life. There's so much available for us. We just have to get it. And I think that it's important that if you've gone there before, um, and Katie, you're giving a lot back yourself of the podcast and the mastermind. And I think that's just so important to say, look, guys, we get it. We were there. We were in your shoes. And that's why we do what we do today, because we don't want to see you stuck. We don't want to see you afraid. We want to see you pivoting to profit. Mm. And that's what it's about. Jennifer, you are incredible. And I definitely think that we should do this again and, and think about more topics because I thoroughly enjoy, I've taken a lot of different notes here on today's conversation. <laughs> um, I love it. And so I just appreciate you so much. It's been such an awesome experience getting to know you before we're done. If you could leave us with some final words of wisdom, and there were so many, but what would be kind of a message to leave us with today that would set us up for maximizing our life behind the chair? You have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that you are worth being successful. Whatever success means to you, believe that you deserve it. You have one life to live. It's up to you. If you're going to go and get the success, it's not going to be handed to you and it's going to be much more enjoyed and well-deserved and more celebrated. If you can just make that decision to believe, start before you're ready. So good. And you are an incredible coach and I just, um, I've adored talking with you today. So thank you for being here. It means a lot. Thank you so much. This was such an honor and privilege to be on your podcast and I love everything that you're doing. So thank you so much, Katie. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you all for joining us here week after week. If you're watching us on YouTube, you're wondering what's the elephant in the room. He's not an elephant. He's actually an average size guy, but Anson, my husband is here. And if you're wondering <laughs> what he's up to, he's my right hand man. He's my boo. And if you ever wonder what, who is that voice at the beginning of every single episode announcing Katie Whitledge to the mic, it's this guy right here. So he's over here today. If you can, if you're watching, that's who that is. And we're just making some pivots around uh, now because of everything that had been going on with, with COVID. And I'm hoping by the time this launches that we've all kind of come out of that storm bigger, better. And like yeah. Jennifer said, willing to, um, find our worth and do what it takes to get that success that we dream of because we are worth it. And I believe that message today. So as always, everybody, I appreciate you being here until next time. Have an awesome day and stay strong.